are gun detectives. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we get to take the mystery out of the Gamo Swarm Viper. This is the Generation 3. Yes, check this out. Anyway, before we get started on this, do me a favor if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel, and I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you have an opportunity, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that side, I got various t-shirts, I got some hats, I got our Generation uh, 2 bipods. In addition to that, I'm also liquidating some of my personal inventory on there and it doesn't last, so check it out. Okay, back to the subject on hand. I'm actually pretty excited about this rifle. This is your latest, absolute latest version of your Gamo Swarm, and this is the Viper. And this is a beauty, I'll tell you, it really is. So this has Gamo's IG gas piston in it so it's got a gas ram in it it comes in both 177 and 22 caliber and this is the latest so it has the 10x the generation 3 inertia magazines so the whole idea behind these magazines if you notice this whole setup it's a lot more low profile I showed this to you guys on the magnums it's the same setup but they put it now on the uh, swarm but it's a low profile magazine it obviously it goes in horizontal holds 10 rounds but the uh, the great thing about the inertia is if you cock the rifle it'll load the pellet initially if you cock it again to see if you load it or what have you it's not going to double load a pellet the way this magazine advances is by the recoil of the gun so the recoil of the gun will then advance the magazine to the next pellet so it keeps you from double feeding it's pretty ingenious actually it really is so this rifle uh, does feature the two-stage cat trigger, which is phenomenal. And I'm going to really pay attention to the trigger test because I'm going to show you before and afters with uh, something that you can do to upgrade this for under 10 bucks. Pretty amazing. Anyway, it comes with this all-weather stock, and this is kind of nice. It's got these um, rubber inlays uh, right here in the grip and in the fore area the four, uh, four stock right here. And it really makes it nice. The texture is really nice. Once again, this has their all resin stock, which is pretty cool. It's got the shockwave butt pad on here. And then you can actually pull, push these little blocks out, if you guys didn't know that. You can actually push these little blocks out. Oh, there goes that one. And uh, it creates a softer uh, recoil with this. So you can take one block out, all three out, you can adjust that, which is pretty nice. You can set that up. This does have their Whisper technology on here. If you can see this. So it's got a built-in suppressor. So this is a Whisper Maxim noise suppression is what they call it. It does come with this Gamo uh, 3x9x40 by by scope, which is pretty cool. And actually, it's actually pretty clear optics. It's, it's surprising uh, how well it does. So the gun itself, it's pretty light. This weighs under six pounds. It's close to like five and a half pounds. It's got a 19.9 inch barrel on it. And overall, it's only 45 inches. So this thing is great for taking the field. It's lightweight. I don't know, it just feels really good in the hand, it does. But I like the, uh, I like the two tone. I like the, I like the gray texture here, along with the, with the black, it looks pretty good. Uh, they're claiming that this will shoot a maximum velocity of a thousand feet per second in the alloy pellet. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's what they're claiming. So I'm sure if you get a light enough pellet, but we're gonna test this like we always do. We're gonna take it through our whole gamut. Uh, this retails for right around that $300 mark. Maybe a little less, you'll find a little less, maybe a little more, just depends where you look. But the great thing about these two is these uh, new Gamma rifles come with a full three year warranty, which is great. All right, so let's go out and test this. I'm trying to get ahead of the weather here a little bit. I'll probably mention that a few times. But uh, let's get this tested, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. Okay, let's test out our Gamo Swarm Viper here, a Generation 3. See what type of velocity we get. I don't have a lot of rounds through this. Honestly, I wanted to get this review going because we're expecting a lot of rain, and that could delay my review being uh, obviously released by a week or so. So I wanted to get this in. 
So not a whole lot of rounds to this, but I did find three pellets that actually worked really well. This is not overly pellet picky, but one of the better ones, once again, and you guys might have seen these before, the Barracuda Green. These are just under a 13 grain pellet, but we're going to shoot five of these over the crony. We'll average it out and uh, you'll check out what the foot pounds of energy are. And then I'm going to tell you two other pellets that actually performed really well. I'll give you info on those. So, shot number one. Let's go. 760. Shot number two. 777. Shot number three. 757. Shot number four. 750. Oh, that was an error. I'm sorry. Let's do that again. It's starting to get a little bit dark. 761. Let's do two more since we had the error there. That one did not pick up once again. I think I'm having issues here with a little bit of light, so let's try again. There you go, 750. And let's do one more. Yeah, it's picking. It's starting to get a little bit dark, so let's try one more. Yeah, well, that's good enough. All right, so you see how it did with the uh, roughly a 13 grain pellet. Also, another pellet it liked well is the uh, Field Target Trophy, the 14.66 uh, grain. We got about 15 foot pounds of energy out of that one, averaging about 676 feet per second. So that's not bad, the Field Target, target Trophy. Here's a new pellet on the block. These are the JTS. These are the called the dead centers. These are 18.1 grain pellet. These are actually, these are performing really well. I've been testing these in a bunch of different rifles. So we average 630 feet per second, because it is a heavier pellet. And uh, yeah, 18.1 grain. And we got 16 foot pounds of energy out of this. So that's not too shabby. Really isn't isn't bad. But these actually are quite quite the performers. Anyway. There is your uh, Viper over the Chrono. Like I said, I don't have many shots through it, so this thing's going to smooth out in time. It'll get a little higher feet per second, and you'll also get a little lower deviation. That's just natural when that uh, piston seal works its way into that chamber. So, anyway, let's move on to the next segment. Okay, let's test the trigger on our Viper right out of the box. This is the Cat Trigger, one of my favorites. Absolutely. So we're going to test this right out of the box, but then I'm going to show you guys something. Then we're going to come back. I'm going to install my uh, trigger screw kit which is, you can get that on my website for just under 10 bucks. Yeah, I'm trying to get this in before storms come in here. But anyway, so let's do a trigger test right out of the box, and then I'm gonna show it to you with the trigger screw. So let's see here. All right, that was two pounds, 10.5 ounces. Not bad out of the box. So two pounds, 10.5 ounces. Okay, now I'm gonna show you with the trigger screw installed. Okay, now with the trigger screw installed, I just wanna show you guys the difference. This is, I'm telling you, this is the best $10 you'll ever spend on a gamma rifle that has a cat or a sack trigger. So watch this. All right, now, I just love these triggers. One pound, 2.4 ounces. One pound, 2.4 ounces. And you guys can adjust that any way you want. You obviously don't want it too light because you don't want to create a you know, hazardous situation to have the trigger go off. I also like to take a rubber mallet and pound these and just to make sure that trigger's safe and it won't go off. But that's a great thing about these cat triggers. They're totally adjustable. And if you guys don't know, I love the fact that the first stage is really soft. So in other words, you bring up this nice light first stage. So it's really, really light. So you bring that up and then it hits a wall. And then you know just a little bit more pressure and that trigger is going to go off. So you can really tune these really, really well. So anyway, that's just a little, just a little tidbit for you. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's do a little accuracy test with our Viper here. I'm going to mix things up just a little bit here. So we're going to be using our four inch splatter burst. No question about that. They come in this nice little roll now. I'm going to leave you guys a link, but I love the impact points on these these old eyes you can see them really well. So this is not pellet picky. It shoots anywhere from the Crossman's to the H&N's. Uh, any of those do well. But these JTS pellets, these are 18.1 grain pellet. 
I'm really liking these. In fact, eventually I'm going to see if I can get some of these and maybe put them on my website for you guys because I, I just can't believe the performance of these. These pellets are so nice. They really are. But anyway, so what we're going to do today, I'm going to shoot a 10 shot group just for fun because I can load it really fast and that way we won't keep you, you know, on camera too long. But I'm going to do a 10 shot group and we're going to use these JTS, these 18.1 grain pellets. So we're our usual, which I call my break barrel distance, it's just 20 yards, it's a good distance. Go ahead and check that out real quick. Okay, now let's just shoot 10 shots and see how well we can make this group. All right, shot number one. Shot number two. Shot number three. Shot number four. Shot number five. Yes, the trigger is adjusted. I have my trigger screw in there, so I do have that advantage. What are we at? Six? I don't want to say anything because I don't want to jinx this. Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to say something. I can't believe this group so far. I got, what, two more shots? And as you can tell, I mean, this thing is just, wow. There you go. Ten shots. Okay, now I can say something. Wow. <laughs> I'm very impressed with that one. That's for sure. Check that out. That's pretty doggone impressive. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's do a little plinking here with our Viper. Just see how well we do. It's a windy day. As you guys noticed, I, I commented a couple of times. I'm trying to get this in. we got a storm coming in for a few days, so I want to get this done. Um, since it is so windy, we're going to stick with the 18.1 grain, the JTSs. These worked really good at 20 yards, so... We've moved ourselves out to 40 yards. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and take a quick look. This is our usual plinking distance. We got a couple of rams there, a couple of little eggs, shotgun shell, a little can. As I said before, it's pretty windy, so we'll see how well we do. I'm going to attempt that shotgun shell first. Ah, that was a hit. All right, how about a steel egg? One on the left there. There we go. And let's see if we can hit the one on the right. That's a hit. Let's get rid of that can. Actually, no, we're going to move on. I'm going to hit that white ram. Red Ram. Man, this thing is just shooting pretty much right on, even in this wind. All right, can we get rid of this can? I'd say that's a hit. This is a lot of fun to shoot, I gotta tell you guys. It really is. I don't know what Gamo did, but the accuracy on this one, whew, it's right there, that's for sure. All right, let's move on to the uh, next segment and we'll wrap this up. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. How do you think our Viper did? I don't know about you, but I thought it did excellent. I was pleasantly surprised at the performance of this rifle. I really was. And I really struggled to come up with some negatives on this. On this specific rifle, I just can't come up with negatives. I just can't. I mean, the only thing you might say a little bit is, Oh, well, Gamma overstates their velocity. Well, do they or don't they? I don't. Most manufacturers do a little bit. And uh, when they talk about velocity, they're talking about the lightest weight pellet they can find so they can kick up that number so it looks more impressive. But actually, just the way this rifle performed was very impressive. It really was. 
Um, you know, gamma has basically three power levels, right? So they have this kind of their first level power. This is, uh, you know, around a 30 pound caulking effort, not much. And then you step up, you have the Mach 1 level. That's definitely increased in, in velocity, a bit, little, a bit, little bit larger um, gas piston in that, in a larger chamber. And then we go up to the max is the Magnum. So you really have three levels. So this is your first level. And with that first level, you get a very easy caulking effort. Like I said, this is probably around 30 pounds or so. There's not much to caulk in this rifle. But I'm going to tell you, I think Gamo, as far as the multi-shot brake barrels, I don't think anybody's even close to the, the Gamos. I think they're way ahead in that category. They really are. Have these 10-shot magazines, and then they keep perfecting it, and they keep upgrading it, which is great. So let's talk a little bit more about positives on this rifle. I like the stock. I really do. I like these rubber inlays. They're really nice. Oh, and just so you guys know, in case you guys are wondering if you wanted to get to the stock bolts because you want to take the stock off or what have you, I'm just going to show you real quick what they do with these rubber inlays. All you're going to need is just a little screwdriver. And if you get that screwdriver, you're just going to go right into the little panels right here. There's a little opening. And you just pop these out. There's not much to it. You'll see that these pop out. They just got little, they have little nubs on them. And this whole piece, I, I like to go gentle because you don't want to break it. Hold on, let me get the front edge here. And this is all it takes, just a little effort. A little colder today, so it's probably, the rubber's a little stiffer. But you just pop these out, just like that. So that's what exposed is your front stock bolts here in case you want to tighten them or what have you. So these just have the little nubs on them. That's all there is to it. It's not much to it. Yeah. Um, and these just go back in just like that. They snap in, nice and secure. So it's that simple, in case you guys are wondering that. So pretty simple there. All right, so talking about the stock, I really like the stock. I like the, the color. These rubber inlays are, are really nice and smooth and soft on your hand, which is great. I like the cat trigger, especially as you guys saw when we upgrade it. Just with that, my little $10 trigger screw, oh my God. We went from a stock roughly three pound trigger to a little over a pound and pretty effortless in setting that up. Another thing I really liked about this, Gamo has stepped up their game. If you notice the last few Gamo rifles I've reviewed, the accuracy is just tremendous. No exception on this one. And because this had a 10 round magazine, we did a 10 shot group because we went through it really quick. But that 10 shot group, my goodness, that was a half inch group at 20 yards, all 10 shots. Pretty amazing. I would support that every time in an air gun. If I can get that out of an air gun, I'd be pretty happy. Um, also, I love, and I touched on this, I love their 10 round magazine. I love the new inertia, which is great, so you don't get the double feeding, which is fantastic. I like the fact that this rifle is light. It's, uh, like I said, it's uh, under six pounds, which is great. You're also going to get, regardless, you're going to get 15 to 17 foot-pounds of energy, depending on your ammo, roughly, in that area, which is perfect for small game and pest control. And then you have the magazine where you can come up with follow-up shots, which are pretty terrific. I mentioned this earlier, but I like the fact that this is easy to cock. It really is. You could shoot this all day long. And then with the 10-round magazines, you can actually go through these rounds pretty quick. Also, I do like the suppressor system, the Whisper technology on this. This is totally backyard friendly. It really is. This is a lot of gun, and I've seen this, um, it, it's just coming out right now, and I've seen it anywhere from like that $280 to $300 range, kind of right in there, and I'm sure you'll see it on sale um, here and there. But I think Gamo's hit a home run with this once again, and like I said, the last few rifles they've been coming out recently, the accuracy is right there. You're getting a lot of right, think about it, for that $300 point, and I don't know if I commented on this, the scope on this, this actually has some pretty good glass on it. It really does. This scope, this will get you by just fine. If you want to upgrade it one day, you can. If you want to go with maybe a mill dot. But the scope right here, this is right out of the box. You're going to be able to shoot this and, and enjoy it just the way it is. And there's not many rifles that you can do that, especially in that $300 price point, especially that has a magazine. So they've really, Gamble's got the corner on that. So how would I rate this rifle overall? Like I said, I couldn't find negatives, so it's getting five stars. It really is. It's going to get five stars. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are all well, and you're getting plenty of shooting in. So take care, and God bless.